thank you for joining me on this episode. I want to talk in this episode about the three things, the three main ingredients, if you will, to working magic or the law of attraction. <clears throat> Again, I'm using the term magic to describe the ability to make change in yourself and the ability to make change in the world around you uh, through your will, your desire, and your belief. And that also is called faith in Christian circles. Jesus said in Mark 11, 23 and 24, that whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe that you have received them and you shall have them. It's actually a magical formula. If you look at various different magical traditions, from high ritual magic to uh, the law of attraction, to faith, to Wicca, whatever, it has a lot of trappings and dressings. Uh, various different traditions have rituals or spells or whatever the case may be. But uh, that's all dressing. There's a three-legged stool, if you will, that it sits on. There are three things that we must develop within ourselves and possess within ourselves if we're going to be effective at making change in the natural world and in ourselves. And those three ingredients are, I already mentioned them, desire, uh, willpower, and belief. Desire is essential. Uh, Jesus again said in Mark 11, 24, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you've received them. A lot of people end up just praying the problem or putting all their energy into thinking the problem, if you will. They're sort of vibing the problem. And oftentimes that works against them because the energy that they're putting out or the feeling and vibration that they're putting out is the exact opposite of the thing that they want. And so oftentimes, uh, sometimes even, when we put prayer and energy into that, we're actually energizing the problem with our own vibration because that's our focus. Instead, we need to focus on the things that we desire. What are the things that we want? Not the things that we don't want. So for example, uh, when it comes to finances, we may be at a place where we have this sort of poverty mentality. We're afraid of lack. We're afraid of money. We're afraid of not having enough money. And so anytime we think about money, we, um, we activate those triggers inside of us. We activate those programs and those energies within us that actually attract lack into our life. And instead of thinking, well, I don't want lack, <clears throat> I don't want to be without, what we need to do is think, I want, uh, what, what do I desire? Uh, why do I desire money? What do I desire the money to be there for me to be able to do? so that we can begin to activate the positive energy of desire. Desire is always a positive energy. It's always reflecting what we want instead of what we don't want. So we have to give ourselves permission to feel and to have those desires. And then that desire becomes a strong fuel that then feeds into our will. Our will is important because we have to make the choice. Uh, if you think about life as uh, every present moment being for you a place of uh, infinite possibilities, then we have to decide which possibilities we want and which possibilities we are willing to forego. The word decision comes from the word uh, scission, which means to cut, and so it means to cut off other options. And so the will becomes involved because we cut off other options to other possibilities when we decide this is the path I'm going to take, this is the one I want. And without that directed focus, our energy just gets scattered kind of like a shotgun and nothing can really happen. So we have to be able to cultivate our desire, find out what we really want, and then we have to make a firm quality decision that we're going to have the thing that we want, that we're going to put the effort necessary, we're going to work the change within ourselves and within our life that's necessary to get the thing that we desire, and that we're going to be able to maintain it for a period of time until that thing shows up in our life. So willpower is very involved. Some people have said that magic or faith is the ability to do your will, to force your will into your life. Now, will can be a very uh, interesting thing, and we can make mistakes with will as well. And uh, one of the mistakes that we make with will is we put too much power and emphasis into what we want when we make the choice. Uh, it sounds a little bit contradictory, but it's actually just a paradox. Um, if, we, if we put too much force into what we want, then we're focusing on the opposition. We're focusing on what's not there instead of what could potentially be there. So while we want to make a quality decision and use our will, we don't want to use our will in a way that creates more resistance or creates more opposition within us. And so some people prefer to use the word intention. So we have to have an intention. We have to have the desire for something. We have to have the intention. 
And then finally, and ultimately, we have to have belief. We have to have belief that we can get the results that we're aiming for. We have to have the belief that the practice and the energy that we're putting into it is actually working. So again, to go back to what Jesus said, if you speak to the mountain and believe in your heart that what you say will come to pass, <clears throat> it will be done for you. But you have to believe in your heart. And he even goes on and says, if you believe and don't doubt. Joseph uh, Campbell, a... Uh, writer of New Thought in the early part of the 20th century. In his writings, he points out the importance of belief and how essential belief is. And one of the things that I think that he explains really well is our belief has to be something that our subconscious can accept. So, for example, if you've got a lot of pain in your body, if you need healing, and you've got a lot of pain in your body, or you've got a lot of symptoms, then uh, we can suggest to ourselves, and we can try to believe that we're healed, but sometimes our subconscious won't accept that end result as uh, a reality because the symptoms, the pain, whatever is speaking to us too loudly. And so we create a conflict within ourselves. We actually create a division or doubt within ourselves if we try to go for, I'm totally healed right away. Now, if you can accept that and believe that and be peaceful and at rest about it, then that's great. But if not, you have to change the belief and maybe do it in sections so that you're sort of chaining outcomes. So your first belief may be, I believe I can, I believe I can be healed. Um, then maybe you switch from that to, I believe the healing power of God is in my body right now. And that healing power is working and that healing power will not stop till it affects a healing and a cure. And if your subconscious mind is able to accept that, then eventually you can begin to get to the place where you, you bring your consciousness out into the future to when that healing has actually taken place. You grab hold of it in the imagination. You grab hold of it in your thought life. You grab hold of it with your, with your heart and you bring it to yourself as a present tense reality where you say, I am healed. So the point is, sometimes it's better to say, I am healing. I am growing. I am improving. I am uh, allowing the good things that I want into my life. Sometimes those are suggestions that are easier for us to believe. And this is an individual process and an individual work that has to go on within our own life and within our own heart. We have to pay attention to what we can actually convince ourselves of or what we actually have the ability to believe in that moment. But as long as we're moving towards our desire with our will and with our beliefs, then it's impossible for change not to happen. Everything else is secondary to that. You, you can have a, a vivid imagination where you're imagining to yourself the outcome that you want. You can be letting go of resistance. You can be doing a lot of different things. But if you don't have these three components working in harmony and working in synchronization, where your will is lining up with your desire and your belief is lining up with your will, then you're not going to get results. However, if you line these things up, if you have the desire, the strong desire for what you want, not what you don't want, but what you want, you have the intention that that is going to come into your life. And because of that intention, you're willing to put forth the effort that you need and make the changes within yourself and within your life and have staying power, faith and patience to get what you want. Then your will and your intention is lined up with your desire. Then finally, all you have to do is follow it up with beliefs and whatever you believe at that stage will begin to happen. But if you can synchronize those three things, it becomes a key that fits into the lock that has shut you out of the very thing that you want. And you create a momentum and an energy, both in the spiritual realm and in the natural realm, that can cause the thing, the, the change that you're desiring to see to come to pass in your life. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, I hope you'll think about this and work with this a little bit. I look forward to doing more of these videos on this topic. I hope it's been a blessing to you and whatever time it is for you there, I hope it's great.